Have you ever wondered how much you should be feeding your fish? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna be going through each of my different aquariums. I have nine set up here in my basement. I'm going to be feeding them, showing how much I feed, how often, and talk about some of the nuances that come with some of the different fish I keep. I think there will be a lot of useful information that you could apply to your own aquariums and your own feeding schedules. And I'm really excited to talk about this one and just showing some of my fish eating, which is always one of my favorite parts of the day. So let's dive right in. So down here in my basement, I primarily keep cichlids, but I do have some tetras, some bottom feeders, and just some other aquarium setups, especially in my fish room. But for all of these fish, I primarily use the Extreme brand. For my biggest fish, I use the Monster Pellet, which is a nine millimeter pellet. For some of the medium size, I use Big Fella, which is three millimeters. And for some of my smaller fish, I use the Peewee or the Nice Pellet, which is a 1.5 millimeter pellet. I really like all these because they're slow sinking, but once they get to the bottom, a lot of my cichlids, and especially my geophagus, love to scour the bottom and get any of those uneaten pellets or food from that substrate. And then maybe the food that I use the most, and definitely my favorite, is the krill flake. And then I'll also mix in the spirulina flakes for things like my severum, so that they get a little more vegetable matter in their diet. But this combination of pellets and flakes give all my fish a well-balanced diet, a variety in their diet, and mixing in different sizes of flakes and pellets help all the different fish in all my aquariums, no matter their size, get the appropriate size food and nutrients. Starting with the 180 here, one of the main considerations is this guy here, the Big Oscar. And that's why I use the monster pellets. I'll also mix in Big Fella pellets and peewee pellets, and I'll use that for the majority of their diet. And I'll also regularly sprinkle in the krill or spirulina flakes with all the different pellets. And since most of these cichlids are nearing their adult sizes, they really don't need to be fed too often. One of the biggest mistakes fish keepers make out there is overfeeding their tanks. It actually pollutes the water, the water quality diminishes, and then the growth rate of their fish suffers because of it. So it's actually counterintuitive that if you want your fish to grow fast, you actually want to reduce the amount you're feeding and really stay up with your water changes and your water quality. So this combination of pellets and flakes and the amount in this lid here is basically what I give to the 180 every day, once per day. So let's go ahead and feed these guys. So the Oscar will go for some of the bigger pellets, but as he chews them up, sometimes we'll make a mess. Some of the other fish will go through, especially the ball of shark, and clean up his mess and eat any of the remaining food. And then some of the smaller flakes are perfect for the severums, the ball of shark. Some of the smaller pellets are perfect for the geophagus, who are constantly sifting the sand. So next up is my 150 gallon tank, which has South American cichlids some denison barbs, and also some bristlenose plecos. I usually go with the smaller size pellets in this tank because of the two angelfish, some of the smaller cichlids, and the denison barbs. The smaller pellets do really well. Next up is my 135 gallon African cichlid tank. This has peacocks and haps, which have a more protein based diet. If you have Mbuna, I would recommend a more vegetable based diet with something like spirulina flakes, but with these peacocks and haps, I go with krill flake a lot, as well as the pellets. Also with my two custom aquariums, I do have an overflow, which goes down into my sump, and especially with flakes that tend to stay on the surface and go right into the skimmer, I will actually take a pinch of the flakes and kind of dip it into the water so that the flakes go down into the water and don't really stay on the surface and go straight into the filtration. And on all of my tanks, I leave my filters and my wave makers on. I'd rather just keep them on so I don't have to worry about turning them back on after I get done feeding. So I just gave these guys a pretty big pinch of krill flake. I didn't feed them at all yesterday, so it was a pretty good sized meal for them. Normally I would dial it back just a bit. But with this tank and the two South American tanks, I do feed just once per day six days per week and I have one day where I fast them and I don't feed them at all. Even though these peacocks and haps are still growing, they're kind of past that young adult stage, so I still think that feeding schedule is perfect for them. 
But even with a bigger pinch of food like this, all of the food will be gone in about a minute and a half to two minutes. So next is my 90 gallon discus tank and there are a few nuances to this aquarium and I'll explain how I mix in frozen foods on all my tanks. But first I'll use some of the smaller peewee pellets or the krill flakes regularly. But I also mix in some beef heart flakes which I was actually testing for extreme for a while. And now that they have actually rolled it out, I got more of it and it's a really good product for discus. And because discus can be some picky eaters at times or sometimes it's hard to get them off of just frozen foods, I'll usually feed them frozen foods once or twice per week. I really like brine shrimp. Any of the brands I've used have really worked. This one is Omega. I also occasionally mix in some frozen blood worms, but not as often as the brine shrimp. And eventually I'll get some frozen beef heart and mix that in as well. So it's kind of a mix of frozen foods and the dry prepared foods for the discus. I definitely don't want them to only be on these frozen foods, so I try and be as limited as possible while still giving them plenty of food. I'll sometimes mix in the nato pellets as it's pretty fun to watch the rummy nose tetras go crazy for those slow sinking pellets. But I'm gonna go ahead and give them some frozen brine shrimp. Usually I'll do one or two cubes and I'll just put some of the tank water in a glass, put the two cubes in and kind of let it thaw out. So next up we are in my fish room. I have my 75 gallon tank which has electric blue acara growing out as well as a couple peacocks and haps that are growing out for the 135. And then over to my side, I have a 40 gallon breeder with some smaller fish, as well as a 33 gallon tank with smaller African shell dwellers. I will say here in my fish room where I have smaller fish, I have a lot of fish just growing out, or in quarantine, I'll use a lot of extreme nano pellets. I really like these as they're slow sinking and all the fish go for them. It doesn't cloud the water or anything. It's one of my favorite foods. And then I'll also mix in some krill flake, but with these tanks, I'll definitely crush up the flakes as much as I can so that they're not too big for some of these fish. But one of my favorite tanks to feed is the 75 gallon tank, so let's get to it. And then for the 40 gallon tank, which has tetras, some small quarries, and some small gymnogeophagus, occasionally I'll mix in some crushed up krill as well, but it's a really simple process with these. And just like with all my other tanks, I'll usually get frozen foods maybe once every week or two. And even though I've been talking about extreme foods throughout this video, and that's primarily because it's what I use, I've been using it for over three years. Both of my brothers use it as well, and that's why we would always recommend it. But there are some other good food brands out there for sure. North Fin, New Life Spectrum, Hikari, some of those brands are really good options. I would just maybe take some of those other bits of advice such as the size of the pellet, crushing up the flakes, variety in the diet, and just using all of that no matter what brand you're using. The last tank to talk about is the 20 gallon quarantine tank. It currently has Corydoras and one Pleco. So I actually put in some algae wafers in this tank as well as some sinking pellets. It's very simple and easy. Okay, so all the fish have been fed. I walked through how much I feed, how often, the brand I use, the type of food. Again, I would just recommend not overfeeding your fish and you should be just fine. But again, if you have any questions, make sure to leave that down in the comment section. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.